I trust that you are having a wonderful summer and uh, your vacations are being a time of rest and relaxation and uh, that everything's going well in your life. We just got off of a two-week supposedly vacation and uh, more like a, a work uh, detail. And, uh, but anyhow, we've had a great time and uh, God had given us some wonderful privileges. We, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to go to Columbus to visit our son just south of Columbus, and he had gotten us tickets to, uh, to go see uh, Jace Robertson from Duck Dynasty, and uh, that was a, a real treat and uh, had a lot of fun and uh, just a great time. And then uh, that Sunday, they attend a very large Nazarene, Nazarene church. And, uh, you know, in fact, they were telling us that it is the, the largest church in the, the, uh, the U.S., I guess. And uh, that was a, a wonderful experience as well. And uh, I just thank God for his, his goodness. The, uh, the other day, somebody from our church... Uh, was coming down the lane. Actually, the, the parents come to our church. The son was driving the truck. And uh, he turns to his father and he says, Dad, he said, uh, the blueberry patch must be doing pretty good. It looks like they've hired a Mexican. <laughs> and he got a little closer and he realized that it was the preacher. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow... Uh, but they say that sun is good for you, I guess. It's uh, supposed to help, so anyhow. But we had a good laugh over that one, and, uh, you know, God is good. And we certainly thank God for his faithfulness. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to the book of John, chapter 14. The Gospel of John, chapter 14. I have three verses that I want to share with you. I want to begin with verse 1. John chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. May God add his blessing upon his word. I believe that we could all agree that these are difficult times, troubled times. You can't turn on the news you can't pick up a newspaper. You can't turn on the radio to, uh, you know, to, to the news to, and everything about it is negative. So and so killed this person, or so and so has been abducted, or, you know, it's one thing after another, uh, a plane crash, or whatever the case might be. In all of our lives, every one of us has been touched by sorrow in some form or another. Disappointments. And sometimes it only takes a telephone call and your world can be turned upside down. You can be having the best day of your life and all of a sudden the phone rings and immediately your world is turned upside down. Troubled times, times of worry, distress, and insecurity. But Jesus' message was given to troubled hearts. It was given to troubled hearts. The disciples had reason to be troubled. And I just want to share a few of those reasons with you. Number one, there was divisiveness among the disciples. There was some jealousy, apparently, and some conflict among them. 
And we'll read about that in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 24 through 30. And, and in this divisiveness, they were wanting to know who was, who was going to be the first. Who was going to sit on the right hand? Who was going to have leadership and be in charge? There was this divisiveness, this jealousy going on. There was the desertion and betrayal by one of them, which was now at this particular time known. We read about that in John 13, 18. The third thing we read about is the separation from the Lord that had been the topic that he had just got done discussing in John 13, 18, or John 13, 33, excuse me. And then the fourth thing was, there was the denying that Jesus had just been, that the denying of Jesus had just been talked about in John 13, 38. He told them that they would all forsake him. He told them that one would betray him and deny him. And he said that he was going away and they weren't allowed to come. And they were troubled. These were difficult times. How were they to, to act? What were they to do? And, and times were even going to get worse for them. But Jesus turns to them and he says these comforting words. And John's portrait here of Christ is that of a consoler. And Jesus is the consoler. And we all need consoled in our lives, don't we? But Jesus turns to them and he says, Do not, do not, do not let your heart be troubled. And you know, one of the amazing things about the Word of God that has always amazed me is the relevancy of it to our day and age. And you know, Jesus is saying to us, Jesus is saying to us this morning, do not let your heart be troubled. I realize this morning that some of you are going through some tough times, difficult times. Some of you are facing things that you don't have the answers for. Some of you, your future is so uncertain. In fact, all of our futures are uncertain, but some of you are going through some tough times. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know what Jesus says? Do not let your heart be troubled. Some of you are worried. Some of you are troubled. Some of you are overwhelmed with everything that's going on. But Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled. The word troubled translated in the Greek is terasso. And the Greek meaning means to be disturbed or agitated or perplexed, worried, tossed about, confused or distressed. And if you're facing any of those emotions this morning, Jesus is saying to you, do not, do not let your heart be tarasso, be troubled. Don't allow it. And you might be saying, well, Pastor, how in the world can we stop that? I mean, that's a part of life. How often have we heard of people and we've seen of people whose, whose hearts and lives were just that way, agitated and troubled and, and overwhelmed and just all kinds of things going on in their lives. But Jesus is saying, don't let your heart be troubled. Now that doesn't mean that we sweep our problems under the carpet and we act like we don't have any. That doesn't mean that, that we just go about and we forget about them. That's not what he's saying. What he is saying is don't let your heart be troubled about what's going on in your life. And then you might say, well, Pastor, how in the world do we do that? Well, he tells us. He tells us how. Number one, deliverance from troubled hearts comes through belief in God and in Jesus. Notice what he says. 
Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in who? In God. Trust in God. Trust also in me. So deliverance from troubled hearts comes through belief in God and in Jesus Christ. Now that doesn't mean we just say, okay, you know, I, I, I believe. No. He's saying really believe. Really trust. Trust to the point that you just put all of your anxiety and, and all of your worries and all of your problems and all of your agitation in me. Turn it over to me. That's what he's saying. Trust. Give it to me. How many of us who have raised children uh, have told our kids when They've fallen or they've hurt or there's a problem going on in, in their life. And we've said to them, it's okay. You'll be all right. Just trust. Or I'll take care of you. I can remember my dad trying to teach me how to swim. And I can remember how scared I was as a, just a young kid standing there on, on the brink of the water, and he'd hold his hands, hands out, and he'd say, just jump. Just jump. you got to get in to learn how to swim. Jump. I'll catch you. I'll be here. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. Just jump. Finally, I got enough courage to jump. Now, what did he do? He didn't jump back and say, fake out. <laughs> Probably would have liked to a couple of times, but uh, no. He was there to, to catch me. And then he'd, he'd tell me, now, I just want you to, to float on your stomach. And he said, I'll keep my hands around you, just, just float. So I'm floating, trying to keep my head up out of the water, you know, and He'd say, you got to relax. You know, kick your feet. Paddle. I'll hold you. God is saying the same thing. Trust me. Trust me. Believe in me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So first of all, deliverance from troubled hearts comes through belief in God. And belief in God and, and in Jesus Christ means to, to just realize that His Word is true. God's Word is true. And He says that all things work together for good. You mean, Lord, that thing I'm going through right now? That problem I'm facing? That hardship right now that I'm going through? That future that I don't understand? That situation that I'm placed in? God's saying, hey, it's going to work out. It'll work out for good. God has a purpose for everything that happens in our life. And I want to tell you something in case you haven't learned yet. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is in charge and he is in control and we need to let him do his thing. Trust in him. Secondly, deliverance from troubled hearts comes through the hope of our heavenly home. Through the hope of our heavenly home. The King James Version says here, he uses, the King James Version uses the word mansion. It says, in my Father's house are many rooms in the NIV. In the King James it says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And he says, I go. Or it, then he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. So deliverance from troubled hearts comes through the hope of our heavenly home. God's house becomes our house when we become a believer in Jesus Christ. What does that mean? 
That means everything that the Father owns, you and I own. Everything. His house becomes our house. Sometimes we have to hide some things at our house because our kids think that our house is still their house. They'll go right to the refrigerator and they'll help themselves. And that's cool. That's all right. They'll still leave empty cakes in the Debbie boxes, you know, in hopes that dad will go to go grab one and there won't be none left. And, you know, they, they love to do that. Where they love to put the empty tea pitcher back in the refrigerator because they know that sure enough, sooner or later, dad's going to go to get a glass a glass of tea, and it's going to be empty. They love that. They probably laugh all the way home. Thank God we got one over on Dad. They don't know that when Mom makes that tea, I spit in it. (laughs) No, I don't don't do that. (laughs) It's a good thought, though, isn't it? But you know, everything that the Father owns, we own. Psalms tells us that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You may be struggling financially right now, but I want to tell you something. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, you are rich. You are rich. Because those cattle on a thousand hills that he owns, you own. Isn't that awesome? And if you're a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, you have every right to say, God, if it please you, could we sell one of them cows? Hey, he tells us, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Tell them to sell a cow. So his home becomes our home. And we hold claim to all that our Heavenly Father has. In our heavenly home, there'll never be any trouble, any problems, any sickness, any death, sorrow, or any other negative thing that we face down here on earth. Heaven is going to be an awesome, awesome place. I don't want to miss it, and I know that you don't either. So deliverance from troubled hearts comes as because we have a hope that, you know, one of these days all these troubles are going to be over and we're going to spend all eternity with God. What a day that will be. Deliverance from troubled hearts comes through Jesus' work. Jesus said, I am going away to prepare a place for you. He tells his disciples, hey, I have to go. Because I have to prepare a place. You know, for so long I thought, you know, I really didn't give that a whole lot of thought. I thought, okay, man, he's just, you know, he's going to go on to heaven and he's going to, you know, work on my mansion up there. He's going to prepare that mansion. I got to thinking about that this week as I was working on this sermon and I thought, you know, it, it certainly goes a lot broader than that, doesn't it? He has to go prepare a place. How did he do that? Well, first of all, he had to go to the cross to prepare. He had to go to the cross to prepare, going to Calvary, securing our redemption. Secondly, he had to go to the gates of hell to secure our passage. Jesus told John the Revelator, that he has the keys of hell and of death. And Jesus is the Savior of the world, and he has conquered death, and he can deliver us from the judgment of both of hell and death. He has the keys to unlock both. And then he certainly went on to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for you and I. And I suppose in all of that, there was also the preparing of the mansion and getting the linens ready. You know, when, whenever we're getting company, 
Deb, she goes, she puts it into high gear. And well, she's always got it in high gear, but, but everything's got to be done. Everything's got to be so so. Everything's got to be just, just right. And the sheets need to be changed. And, you know, and I say, well, you know, them other people, they only slept in it one night. They're, they're okay. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do that either. But, uh, you know, everything needs to be changed. And, and uh, you know, our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, is preparing the place. And I'll tell you what, when we get there, it will be perfect. It will be perfect. Deliverance from troubled hearts comes through Jesus' return. It comes through Jesus' return. He says, I will come back again. I will come back again. There are two times when Jesus will come for his own. He comes at the point of death. He comes when we breathe our last breath. He is there to greet us and to usher us home. And then he will come again to return to rapture the church in the air and together we shall be in the air to go to be with him two times and so deliverance from troubled hearts comes through Jesus return there's going to come a day when all of our troubles and all of our worries and all of our anxieties and all the negatives of this world will all be forgotten and we'll spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. What a wonderful, wonderful time that's going to be. Deliverance from troubled hearts comes through an eternal dwelling with Christ in heaven. He says that where I am, you may be also. That where I am, you may be also. You know, I thank God for His grace here on earth. I thank God for His mercy and His goodness, His love, and all the blessings that have been bestowed upon us. But I thank God that life is far beyond this world that you and I know of today. True life is in a world that we haven't even experienced yet. I'm so glad that God is preparing a place for us. And so, whatever it is in your life, whatever is bogging you down right now, the affairs of of this life, the worries, the troubles, the problems, hey, give them to God. Because Jesus says, trust in God, trust in me, And you and I have absolutely nothing, nothing to worry about when we put our faith and our trust and and our concerns at the feet of the cross. He's there for us to carry our burdens. Casting all your care upon Him. Why? Because He cares for you. And so whatever it is today that you're facing and going through, hey, rest assured that God knows all about it. Just give it to Him. Because there is deliverance for whatever it is your heart may be going through today. Will you stand with me? Father, I thank you today for your faithfulness. I thank you for the word, how it comforts our hearts. And I thank you that you are the great consoler that comes and you have the truth for us. And this morning as we've looked at your word and as we looked at this wonderful passage of scripture, and Lord, I know that your people are going through some tough times. But you've spoken today and you've told us that that we are to trust in you and we are to put all of our concerns at your feet because you care for us. So Lord, help us to do that. 
So often we can get up and we can say this and, and we can sit back and we can say, yeah, that's true, that's true, but yet so often we fail to do that. Lord, help us today to just turn it all over to you because you are a God of all comfort, a God that can console us in our hour of need. So minister unto us as only you alone can. Allow your word to comfort our hearts as you want it to. And Father, bless your people, I pray. Go with us now as we go our separate ways. And for all that you do for us, we'll praise your name. Amen. May God bless you.